What's up guys, John with Stay on Target here. So this week on John's comic run, I'm combining two weeks into one. So here's a little bit of what I got last week. I've only got two things that I'm actually picking up. We've got Batgirl number 30. And uh, this one actually is not by Gail Simone. This one is Margaret Bennett. And she's been uh, she's been good uh, in some of the previous books that I've read of hers. So that's gonna be exciting to read Batgirl. Um, but the one that I'm most excited about this week, we've got Batman Eternal. And this one's got a, uh, a great deal of writers on it. This one's actually the new one. It's a weekly Batman comic for the first time. And uh, Scott Snyder's kind of doing the storyline uh, oversight on this one. Uh, but there's a lot of other writers that are that are doing this one. And, uh, and so I'm super excited to, to check this one out, to get into that world and see what's going on in it. And this week, I am looking at Forever Evil Justice League 20. Nine, but the Justice League Forever Evil is really good. Um, uh, it's still awesome. If you wanted, you could probably pick it up in trade paperback, and that might be a good way to do it, or trade uh, hardback, or whatever it'll be. Uh, that might be a good way to do it. It also might be good to wait on some of those because I know there's going to be like the the Rogues Rebellion, and that's going to be a really cool one from uh, from Brian Bucciolato. All right, so also this week, I've got Wonder Woman number 30, really cool. Brian Azzarello's run on Wonder Woman has been you know, just amazingly good. Um, consistently, I've, I've been uh, excited to read it every time whenever it comes out. But here's a couple that, uh, that I want to say are my picks from this week. We've got Batman number 30. This is the zero year final act. Uh, and so this, this kind of denotes the beginning of the final act. We've gone through a lot of stuff uh, with the zero year, and it's really cool. I noticed Scott Snyder's Twitter um, earlier this week, they mentioned he mentioned that they had decided what storyline and story arc they were gonna go with next after zero year. So it's really kind of a cool thing to see him continuing on with this Batman thing. Uh, they did the Batman Eternal, it was really good. That's gonna be a weekly, so you can pick that guy up. There's a lot of things that are gonna be going on in that book that are gonna be insane. So, uh, so you know, if you wanna pick up that book, that book will be awesome. In fact, I think they were actually bringing in Stephanie Brown, who's one of my favorite characters from pre-New 52, um, who was the Batgirl back then, also the spoiler. So they're gonna bring her back eventually uh, as the spoiler. Um, and so we'll see how that, that whole storyline goes as well. I'm really excited to read through that and, and see that one play out. My other pick of this week, Thor number 21, this is The Last Days of Midgard Part 3. So I just wanted to give you guys a quick, quick review of Thor, The Last Days of Midgard. And this is, this is Part 3. Um, the previous two parts were really cool. This one deals uh, a lot with like the, the ramifications of some of what Thor has done. There's the uh, there's two storylines going on in this one. And I guess, I guess I should say, blanket this next statement, say full spoilers on this storyline uh, to come. But we've got um, Agent Solomon, who is uh, who is in Shield and doing some environmental stuff. There's this there's this evil guy named the Minotaur. Who we saw him in his full Minotaur esque form at the end of uh, issue two, and that was pretty awesome. Uh, I was actually kind of hoping to see a little bit more of him in the third issue, but we did not see him yet in the third issue. Uh, in fact, he hasn't faced off with Thor. I'm probably going to delay that until the end. So there's these two storylines going on. One is Thor as an old man trying to save Earth Midgard. He's trying to save it from Galactus, who's trying to devour this dead Earth. It's it's this dusty dead Earth and it's not blue anymore. And so apparently something, some big disaster has happened to where the Earth is no more. On the other side of that, we've got the current day Thor, who's trying to save the planet from these polluting, floating island situation things from the Minotaur, who's the CEO of Roxxon, and he's like doing crazy stuff to make a lot of money and whatever. So that's what's going on in those two storylines. I don't know if they connect at all. I don't know how they connect at all. And other than the fact that, you know, if this is truly the last days of the Earth that we're viewing in the current day stuff, how that connects with the dead earth, you know, so many years in the future. I don't know. We'll find out. We shall find out for sure. But that is uh, is Thor. The thing that, that I love about this storyline and, and these writers and, the, and everything is the way that they write Thor's dialogue. It feels very much like the films. It feels, you could say it in that same tone of voice. You could almost hear Hemsworth saying it. 
that's super cool. That's amazing. I love the idea of these connected worlds of, of that they're they're taking this thing. They're not trying to like ignore it or complete like completely make a new Thor. They're trying to make it similar to the to the movie, so it appeals. And so like for guys like me, where it's like I just started picking this up at the story arc, it's great because it makes me connect with the character immediately. All right, so then we've got this Roz Solomon agent. She's pretty cool. Um, with the, the like, she does some environmental protection agency stuff with Shield, but apparently she doesn't have much power because Roxanne's like doing all this crazy stuff, polluting the skies, floating around their floating islands, and and even to the extent of going after Braxton uh, or Braxton, Thor's like the place that he loves, this is the town that he loves, and he spends time there at the nursing home and stuff, and so like this guy's going after that. And apparently Solomon can't stop it at all. Like this is just like what, if she's part of S.H.I.E.L.D. and she's supposed to have any power whatsoever, don't see it. Don't know what's going on there. There isn't enough explanation about that at all. Hopefully next issue we see a little bit of that. Uh, it seems like at the end of this issue that we're gonna see some smackdownage with Thor and Ulick, the Gorilla. Sorry, I just really just, if, if you haven't read this book, I literally just spoiled the last frame. The last frame of the last page. I just spoiled it. Boom. I'm a spoiler. Sorry. I apologize. Anyway, that's that book. I would give this current storyline, of course we're not done with it, so I can't really give it a full rating, but I would say that you should definitely be picking this up if you like Thor, if you like the movies, if you like any Thor comic books, if you like the idea of Thor, this one's a cool one to pick up. If you don't care about any of that, or awesomeness, or awesome fights between giant Galactus and Thor, if you don't like hammers, you probably wouldn't like this one either, like this like this book. If you don't like thunder, you, you probably wouldn't like it. I'm trying to think of anybody else who wouldn't like this book, but I really can't think of anybody. So anyway, if you like any of those things, pick it up, check it out, see if you like it. Um, you could probably wait for the trade, but and again, it's always nice to pick them up as they go. That way you can be up to date and you feel great. I mean, it's, it's the same difference as like waiting for a TV show to be over so you can watch the entire season all at once in a binge. So that's the same exact thing as like waiting for the trade. So I tend more to like, hey, let's pick up the comics because you get the cool covers, you get them as they go, come and stuff. Um, and if you really like a story, I pick up the trade as well. So anyway, that's just me. You guys can do whatever you want and uh, so forth. Something else I wanted to mention, we are counting down to free comic book day. That is a week from Saturday, May the 3rd. Make sure you go to your local comic book shop, support local comic book shops everywhere, and you probably find quite a few deals. I know at Outer Limits Borough, where I pick up my comics, where if you're in the Nashville area, you should pick up your comics, they always have some really cool deals like buy one, get one trades, they had comics by the pound last year. They debuted comics by the pound, so it's it's you can literally just weigh your comics and pay for whatever they weighed. Um, that was a really cool idea. I think they'll probably do that again. I suspect they will do that again. Check with your local comic book shop, even if you're not in the Nashville area, and see what deals they've got going on. All right, that's it for now. I'll see you next time on John's Comic Run.